Aloha everyone, meteorologist Malika Dudley here, and I am Skyping with my father, Dr. Dudley, who is a tsunami expert. He's been studying tsunamis for decades and was a professor at the University of Hawaii at Hilo for decades as well. And he joins me now. Hi, Dad. Hello, dear. Okay, so the reason I had to interview you is because um, there is a post that's going viral right now. Um, let me read it. And I want to get your opinion from um, an expert to let people know what the actual risks are and how much of this is just sensationalism. So let me read it. Three days ago, I reported of the possibility of the Kilauea volcano portion of the Big Island breaking off and creating a biblical tsunami that would likely hit the west coast of California, Central America, and South America. Little did I realize that my concern would be voiced by the USGS as well. An area of land on the south flank of the volcano known as the Helena Slump, about the size of Manhattan, is moving and could break off into the ocean. Sending a tsunami toward the west coast with 100 plus foot waves moving at 500 miles an hour. Cities like San Diego, Los Angeles and others could be wiped off the face of the earth. They say the bosses at USGS know about this and are intentionally, intentionally concealing it from the public for fear of causing panic. Media outlets in Hawaii and Los Angeles have allegedly been specifically told not to say anything yet for the same reason. So you and I are always concerned about tsunamis because it's not if but when. I've heard you say that over and over over the years. Um, and I've also heard you say that, you know, these are natural hazards. They happen, but they don't become natural disasters unless we're not prepared. So what's happening right now with the lava lake and the potential of the lava lake continuing to drop to the point where it hits the water table. And then if that happens, the potential of steam driven explosions, obviously people like you and I start to think, well, could this possibly trigger a landslide or, or something that could cause a tsunami? So why, why don't we start from there? Okay, well, we've had a, a, a significant history of locally generated tsunamis that have been created by landslides. And um, most of these have been, you know, in the pretty distant geologic past. Uh, over 100,000 years ago, we had one called the Amita Slide, which came off of uh, Mauna Loa. And it probably took part, you know, pieces of the um, near shore up over 1,000 feet on the island of Lanai. And it may have crossed the Pacific as far as Australia with waves, some estimates say 80 feet high. So that would be considered a Pacific-wide tsunami. But we constantly have the risk of Pacific-wide tsunamis because of all of the, you know, subduction zones where the plates crash into each other all around the Pacific. So if you live anywhere in the Pacific or even the Atlantic or the Mediterranean Sea, anywhere in the world on water, you need to know about tsunamis and what to do. And you need to know not to panic, but to be prepared to have a plan. You know, if, if there's a warning that goes off during the daytime, don't rush down to your kid's school if it's in a hazard zone, because they will be evacuated and go to where they're gonna be taken. But know this ahead of time. They need to do tsunami drills so that everybody knows just what to do. Because when the moment arrives, we're usually not our calmest. We need to have practiced. So the people along the West Coast in, in California, Washington, and Oregon, they all need to have a plan. I don't think, you know, San Diego and Los Angeles are going to be wiped off the map. That's a little crazy because they received tsunamis in the past that haven't done that to them. Okay? But people there should be prepared. The public needs to be better, better educated. I don't think there's any suppression of geologic information. But, you know, also they don't want people to panic who don't really understand the, what the threat is and how to respond. So let's talk about the Helena slump and um, the potential of that sliding in. Well, the Helena Poly is a you know, big set of cliffs along the south shore of, of our island. And little by little, they're going into the sea. And there'll be times when they'll go in in, in big chunks. So if there's a volcanic explosion, there is indeed the risk of a large chunk sliding in. It's on the south side of the island. It would probably project away with most of its force toward the South Pacific. So for the rest of our cha island chain, 
that's probably good news. Most of the energy should head toward the south. Or could there be wrapping or could it reach the oh, other of islands? Course, of course there will be. There will probably be refraction. Waves will wrap around. But there will be less energy. So right. it should be less dangerous. If a landslide were to occur, obviously we can't predict how big this landslide would be, how big a wave would be, or anything like that. But one thing that, that is relatively predictable is the travel time from the big island yeah. to the other islands. In 1975, when we had the locally generated tsunami that, that struck so badly at Holope, it took about 15 minutes for the waves to wrap around the island to get to Hilo. And they were on Oahu the 40 minutes, so all of the islands within an hour. So there's really not time for, for the best evacuation plans to depend on the government to tell you what to do. If you feel the earthquake, you have to know what to do. Or if you see the water behave strangely, withdraw or suddenly start in, you have to realize that this is a sign that there's potentially very dangerous tsunami wave coming. Can people feel safe if they are in high ground and inland? The best information I can provide, the best advice, would be to head in, you know, up to at least a few hundred feet above sea level, a kilometer or a mile inland. I'm not going to live in fear. I love going to the beach and I love snorkeling and scuba diving and body surfing and all that stuff. But I want to be prepared, know what to do, and I want to, you know, um, have the same for my friends and family and for everyone. But, you know, we, we need to do more, more studies on all of these things. And I know with the little funding they have at USGS and the um, in NOAA, where their tsunami program, which is actually getting funding cuts, that's tragic. You know, um, they would like to do more work so we can be more precise, you knowing exactly what we should do. So, yeah, there is a risk. We always need to be prepared. Now is a moment of some anxiety because I think the risk is heightened. What do you think specifically, um, you know, maybe looking at like geologic time or just things that have happened um, in, in history with tsunamis and volcanoes being the, the catalyst to start kind of a chain of events, what would you see as the most likely scenario? The Hawaiian Islands tend to be, you know, effusive and not explosive volcanoes. But they, you know, do have their moments. Fortunately, they're rare. We may be approaching one of those rare moments. Um, you know, there have been some massive volcanic explosions around the rim of the Pacific that have caused huge tsunami waves. I don't think that's what we face in Hawaii. What did you think as you were following the progression of the events over the last week here on the Big Island? What was your first first thought? Well, of course, my, my first thought is about the people that live around where the, the rift zone is where the lava is coming out. And especially since, you know, your sister and my daughter has a, a home in that very area, so we've been, you know, really following this very, very closely. When you have family that are right next to the lava flows, you are concerned for, you know, on, on a different level. Um, and it's really sad for all the people that have built homes there. But it is an active volcano. It's not a secret. If this is going to sound right, but one of the prices of living in paradise is that we're surrounded by ocean, we have hurricanes, not very often, um, we have tsunamis, we have active volcanoes. They're, they're beautiful, but they're also dangerous. And if you want to live, you know, if you, uh, we have all chosen to live there, but you need to learn about how to live there safely. And what were your thoughts, like, scientifically about it? I know... Um you have a degree in geology, and you've studied the ocean and tsunamis for, for a long time. So, And living on the Big Island over so many years and seeing eruptions up close over the years. Um, uh, uh, absolutely. I had my concerns. And um, this would not be a time when I would go down and you know picnic next to the ocean or go out and spend my entire day surfing. Because... Yeah, you know, I think the odds are, at any moment, are, are, are good that it's not going to happen. But it has happened in the past, and it will happen again. Right, better you know, safe than sorry. You don't want to be the, the, the victims. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else that you would want the community to know? I would say ch channel your, your, your anxiety 
and energy into learning more about what to do. Because that can only help you, your friends, your family, your loved ones, the people you, you, know, you care about, and everyone. Be safe. Because eventually we are going to have another big tsunami. We're long overdue, whether it's going to come from Alaska or Chile or where we don't know. It could happen locally. And so, you know, instead of being afraid, be prepared. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Dudley, for this interview. And I, I'm hoping I, I don't have to call you back in the next few days. And, you know, I, I think it's always a good idea to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And, you know. Absolutely. That that's really all we can do at this point. So I think we share the same anxieties and fears and hopes um, as our fellow Big Island residents and family and friends that are that are um, dealing this on a personal level right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely.